I've been wanting to make this video for so long and I'm so excited to finally be able to make it, but I felt like if I would have made it a couple months ago, it would have just been too early. But basically, if you don't know really what I'm talking about, the only time I think I've ever talked about this so far on my channel is in my Why I'm Not Going to College video, and that's where I mentioned that I was going to be traveling in a van for a little bit after high school. So yeah, you can go check out that video if you want, but I'll probably be repeating everything uh, related to van life that I said in that video, in this video. So, yeah, I'm just gonna be running through like as much stuff as I can think to talk about. And if you're interested in all of that, all my future plans, my travel plans, um, the future of this channel, what kind of content's gonna be on here in the coming months, um, then you can watch all the way through. It'll probably be a longer video. Otherwise, if you just wanna know specific stuff, I'm gonna leave some timestamps down below in the description. If you just wanna know like where I'm planning to go, you can skip right to there. So yeah, let's get started. So right now, I'm a senior in high school. I have like less than three months left and I'm not planning on going to college. I mean, it's always an option in the future. It's not like I'm flunking my classes because I just don't care. Um, I'm still getting good grades, so I have that as an option in the future if I ever just decide to change my mind, but I'm not planning on going. And so instead, what I'm planning on doing, not really related to like career-wise or whatever, but what I'm gonna be doing this summer probably starting around late July or early August, that's when I'm planning to leave, is I'm going to be traveling for a few months in a van. More specifically, a cargo van is probably what I'm gonna be buying. It could be something else, but like that's kind of just what's in my price range. If you've never heard of people doing this before and you think that's like really weird, just look up van life on, you know, YouTube. And you'll see a lot of people are doing it. I mean, not like a lot of people in comparison to the world population, but there are a ton of people who actually live or travel in vans. And I'm kind of gonna be like between that. You know, I'm not gonna be living full time in there. Or I am going to be living full time in there, but I'm not planning on doing it for years. I mean, it could turn out that way, but it's not something I wanna do for a long, long period of time. But it's also not something that's just gonna be like a two week long trip. And I'm planning on it kind of being like a few months, you know, maybe four or five months. And then after that, I'll have some other plans, which I'll tell you about later in the video. And then after that, I don't know what I'm going to be doing. I might go to back to the van. That's probably pretty likely. The reason behind it, I mean, there's a few different reasons. One is it'll help me save money. That's a huge thing. Another thing is like, I don't exactly know what I want to do for the rest of my life. And I feel like going to college is kind of a waste of time if I don't know, because what if I decide I don't want to be there? Then I'm not only wasting time, but thousands of dollars. So I don't want to try to figure out what I want to do with my life while I'm at college. I have ideas, but they don't require going to college. And so I feel like a good thing for me to do would just to travel. And the reason for that is because, okay, what else am I gonna do? I could stay where I live, which is Wisconsin, and work you know have a get a full-time job like i work as a cashier right now i could maybe move up to full-time there i don't know but i don't like living here i don't have any like-minded people around me i l don't want to live with my parents for the rest of my life i mean they're cool and everything and i love my dogs i'll miss my dogs so much but i mean i just don't like it it's not my favorite place in the world. I prefer warmer weather, and of course we do have warm summers and whatever, but I cannot stand another winter here, let me tell you that. So I don't, like I really don't feel, or never in my life have I felt like I'm going to live here the rest of my life. And there are a lot of places I wanna to travel to, and specifically along the west coast, which I'll get to later in the video. Um, I think that that can be a really transformational journey for anybody, whether you're traveling in a van or you're staying at hotels or hostels or with friends, traveling can teach you so much. And it's not just about like the fun parts of it. It's about the times when you don't know what you're doing or when you kind of get lost or have difficulties. I'm not going into this thinking that it's just going to be 
the super perfect experience and nothing is gonna go wrong like my van could break down I'm totally aware of that but I think that no matter what happens I will learn so much and grow so much from the experience overall another reason for it is just kind of like intuition it's not something that you know the first time I ever learned that people lived in vans I was like oh my gosh I want to do that I think the first person was Elise from Raw Alignment and she had like a I'm guessing a cargo van I think it was and she just put like an air mattress in there and I looked at that I was like oh my gosh that seems like a terrible way to live but a couple months or maybe a year later is when I found that other people were doing that and people would actually like convert the interior of their vans into really cool designs and they would you know put in flooring put in wood panels on the walls and ceilings and they would construct a bed and they'd have a sink and all that stuff and I was like that seems really cool and I'm not just talking about like super elaborate expensive designs like people who only spent a couple thousand dollars had really cool designs and I was like I could totally see myself doing that and for the intuition part since I don't know exactly what I want to do with my life it just for some reason it feels like the right step to finding what that is but yeah the main reason is like money I definitely don't have enough money to be spending nights in hotels for months straight like that's no way I don't feel like most 17 year olds or I'll be 18 when I'm doing this but I don't feel like most people would be able to do that and so oh that's another thing I want to talk about money I did talk about this a little bit in my college video but I think it's really important to me at least to like share the cost of things um, especially like how much money I currently have how much money I kind of plan to have by the time I start this whole thing because I, I just feel like when I'm seeing other people do this that's what I want to know like how are you affording to do this and so that's what I want to share currently I have about nine thousand dollars in my regular savings account and then I have this thing called a grow green certificate which is just something that my mom put a thousand dollars in when I was born and it's made a whole two hundred forty eight dollars so one thousand two hundred forty eight dollars is that's something I get when I'm 18 so didn't earn that part of the money the regular savings that I have, um, some of it's from YouTube, a very small portion. I think I've earned maybe around $1,000 from YouTube. Some of it's also from babysitting. I babysat last summer. I made maybe eight or $900 from that. And then the majority of it is from working as a cashier, which is the part-time job that I've had since August of 2016, which I, I got that a month after I turned 16. So... Um, that's something that I feel like is really important because if I hadn't gotten that job, I wouldn't be able to do this because I wouldn't have any money. So um, yeah, I basically worked, right when I started, I worked like four hours one day, maybe two days a week sometimes, and actually three days a week. So I worked like 12, 13 hours a week because um, I didn't, it wasn't exactly four hours. We stayed over after close, but yeah, like 12, 13 hours a week, and then it kind of, it's kind of like around 11 to 16 hours a week, I would say, is what I've been working overall um, throughout the whole time, because sometimes they only have me work once a week when it's not as busy. Like in January, this past January, I only worked one day a week um, for like seven hours, and sometimes I work three days a week. So I made... The first six months being there, I made ten twenty three an hour, which is pretty good considering Wisconsin minimum wage is seven twenty five. And then, for whatever reason, they bumped everybody's salaries up, um, or not salaries, pay wage. I don't know what it's called to ten forty five for part timers. So that's how I made the majority of the money that I have. And then another thing is that I. When I'm 18, I also get about $4,000 because I was in a car accident back when I was like seven or eight years old. So some of this money, like I totally understand, I did not earn it. You know, I didn't choose to get in a car accident, um, but it's pretty cool that I got $4,000 from it, you know? I plan to keep the part-time job that I have until like maybe a few weeks before I leave. I might kind of quit it in July. I don't know when I'm going to, um, but I definitely want to save up as much money as possible while at the same time not working all the time because I want to have time to like convert the van. Overall, I have the 9,000, the 1,200, and the 4,000. I don't know how much 
my mom just says it's 4,000 something. So that's about $14,000, a little over. And then I'll obviously make money from my job between right now and when I leave and I might babysit this summer again. So that'll probably be like 2,000 more dollars. 1000 to 2000 more dollars. So overall kind of like 15 to 16000 dollars is what I'll have saved up. But before I have all that saved up, I will obviously have spent some of it, so it's not going to be like all at the same time I'll have that much money. But I hope you kind of know what I'm saying by that. And so my plans are to buy a van between 2000 and 4000 dollars is what I've been searching. I've been looking on Craigslist um consistently for like this whole past year, not because <laughs> not because uh, I wanted to buy a van a year ago, but just so I could kind of get an idea of what a good price to pay for what I'm looking for is. I would never pay less than $2,000 for a van because there's probably something wrong with it. Honestly, I probably wouldn't pay less than $3,000, but just keeping my options open, you know, somebody might be like really desperate to get rid of something even if it's in good condition. Um, and then $4,000 is kind of my maximum because I really don't want to spend that much on it. Like I said, I'm not planning on living it in it for a long, long period of time. I was actually looking on Craigslist this morning. I hadn't been on there in like two or so weeks. And I found like four vans that I was like, I could totally check these out. And I had found one like a couple weeks ago. I think it might still be up there. I'm not sure. So I have like five vans that I'm probably maybe tonight or sometime in the near future I'm gonna like show them to my parents and we'll kind of maybe check them out soon. That would be really cool because I've been planning on finding one in April but obviously I'm not opposed to finding one sooner. I just didn't want to get one when it was like February and super cold out and have it just sit out there because I'm not gonna work on it in the freezing cold weather. So another thing since we're since I just talked about my parents in my last video, I said, yeah, they're not supportive. They're not like into the idea, but they'll allow me to do it, you know? I think I think they've kind of warmed up to it as I've explained more and more of it to them, which is nice. But basically, when I go on Craigslist, I just go to the cars and trucks things and I go buy both dealer and like private seller. And then I do between 2,000 and 4,000 miles, or not miles, <laughs> uh, dollars and What's the other thing? Oh yeah, I go 200 miles from the zip code of my city because honestly, I'm willing to go a long distance for a good van. I think that, you know, if I was to just stay within a couple miles, I wouldn't find anything. And the vans that I have found are like two and a half to four hours away from where I live, but I think it's worth it, like I said. And something I feel like people might be wondering is, you know, am I gonna go pick up a van four hours from my house by myself through somebody that I found on Craigslist, no way. I definitely would go with my stepdad. Just in case you're wondering, I figured I'd throw that in there. Also because he probably knows a little bit more about vehicles than I do, I have watched quite a few things on YouTube of like how to buy a used car, what type of things to check, but like it's better to have somebody there who knows more. <laughs> okay, maybe we should move on to getting to the fun part, which is where am I gonna be going? And so um, I there's this really cool website, and I think there's like an app for it that you can get called Road Trippers, which is, it's such a good app. It's honestly amazing, like not sponsored obviously, but oh my gosh, I wish I could just like do a video all on this thing because even if you're not going on a road trip, it's a fun app, like go check it out. And so, let me get my screen recorded and I'll kind of show you around it. Okay, before I start, I just want to say I don't really have an end destination, like a place where I'm going to get to and then I'm going to stay there. Um, after I talk about this, I'll tell you what I want to do after that. Um, so I'm going to like, I have an end destination on here, but that's not where I'm going to be ending and then like living there. So anyways, here we go. This is the overall trip that I'm going to be taking. Most of the markers are just like national parks, but there's things all along the way that I have planned on doing. What's really nice about this app is that you can like look up accommodation, attractions, and culture, food and drinks. You can all see all these things. And so you can just, there's a lot of different things that'll show you along your road trip. Um, you can do like 30 miles from your route all the way down to five. 
And so I did that and then you can save things. So up here I have a bunch of saved places that I have that I want to go to along the way. And I'm not going to go through that because I think it kind of first of all ruins the surprise and also for safety reasons. Obviously I'll show you in the future when I'm making vlogs and whatever. But for now I'm just going to kind of show you the main things which most of them are national parks. So my trip starts in La Crosse or on Alaska, Wisconsin, which is where I live. And then basically I'm just going to cut down through Minnesota and then through the bottom of South Dakota too. And then here we've got our first stops near Rapid City, which is Badlands National Park, Mount Rushmore, Black Hills National Forest, Wind Cave National Park. Then I'm going to go through Wyoming and then up to Grand Teton National Park and Yellowstone and then up into Montana and to Glacier National Park. Now one thing I do want to say as well is that I'm not like 100% going to every single place and it's not like I'm not gonna maybe check out places that I don't have on here. These are just kind of things that it's like oh yeah i could go there like that seems like a cool place to go and i'm also planning on getting a national parks pass which is 80 dollars a year so that's nice okay anyways next i'm gonna cut down and go through idaho and then into washington and then over to mount rainier national park up through seattle into olympic national forest and honestly this is like what i'm most excited for I don't know why, it just seems really cool. And then we're gonna go down through Oregon to Crater Lake National Park, and then into California, Redwood National Park, down along the coast, eh, kinda, and San Francisco, and then over, and here's where like the National Park hotspot is. I'm probably not gonna be going to all of these. The first one is Yellowstone, that's probably the one that I'm least likely not to go to just because I know you have to have reservations like way in advance. So yeah, and I don't know if there's any like free camping sites in there and all the ones you have to pay for, I think get booked like five months in advance within 15 minutes of going up or whatever. So probably won't go to that one, but just put it on there anyways. Then over here to Kings Canyon National Park, Sequoia National Park, Death Valley National Park, that's another one I might not go to. I'm like, I'm really excited about that one. I think it seems really cool, but it is a long distance. It's a lot more miles than if I were to not go to it. So that's another one I might not go to, I don't know. And then the last one is Joshua Tree National Park. And then I'm gonna head up this way and kind of, this is the area where I'm planning on kind of stopping my journey. Well, here's the part where I'm gonna tell you what I'm doing afterwards, or planning on doing afterwards. It could always change, you know? I'm totally open to my plans changing. I don't like to plan things way too far in advance because I think spontaneity, or however you say that word, is awesome. So, um, after that, say my trip ends in like December. After that, I'm planning on doing a few months, maybe like three, four, I don't know of um, work exchange or more specifically woofing which stands for hopefully i get this right worldwide opportunities on organic farms i think that's it and so this is a type of thing where you it's basically an educational experience where you get to work on an organic farm for I think they have like, you can do it for a week or two and up to six or months or a year, I don't know. Um, and you basically get to stay on that person's property. Maybe they have like a, a room for you, a little cabin. Maybe you can pitch a tent. I could stay in my van on there. Um, and you stay there. They give you free accommodation, free food, and then you work for five to six hours a day, Monday through Friday. And so you you kind of 
it's a work exchange. You exchange your work for food and accommodation. And while doing this, you get to learn about agriculture, which believe it or not, you know, I'm not just doing that because I want to be able to save a ton of money and like not have to pay for stuff. I mean, that's certainly a reason for it, but that's not the only reason. In the future, I would love to live somewhere like off grid and be able to grow my own food, not all of my own food, but a lot of my own food. And I think it would be really cool to learn how to do that from people who actually have their own farms. And so I am genuinely interested in the agricultural aspect of that. And another thing is other people are staying on that farm as well. Um, again, the numbers range. Not all farms are going to be the same. There might be like three people. There might be 20. I don't know. Um, but you get to meet a lot of other people from all over the world who are travelers as well, kind of doing the same thing as you. So that's really cool. Um, and I think that would be a really neat opportunity. And so that's what I'm planning on doing. And I, I'm thinking of doing it in California. Okay, my camera just overheated, so I had to wait a while on to turn it back on. So I don't really know what I was talking about or where I was, but hopefully I'm not going to repeat myself. The most likely state I end up doing it in is California, but I'd be open to doing it other places as well, um, like Arizona. Someplace close, you know, I'm not going to be going far away. In the past, I thought I could do it in Hawaii maybe, but, you know, I don't want to have to get rid of my van after only having it for a few months. Like, I I do plan on using it more in the future, even after I'm not really living in it as much anymore. Um, but you can't really ship a van to Hawaii with all of the stuff in it, which is something I didn't know when I first thought of doing that. I thought, you know, you could just ship it for a couple thousand dollars over there and it'd be all good. But you have to have the interior pretty much cleared so that isn't really an option but california is a cool place so i think i would probably end up doing it in there and like i said i don't have a destination really because if um if i ended up doing it kind of like in the middle of california or northern part then i would probably go up along the coast um i think that would be cool but if it's more in the southern area i'm not going to go up along the coast and then cut back down so it's kind of just in between like the big sur and santa barbara area that i'm planning on ending before i move on to the specifics of the van i wanted to say that i would love to meet up with people along the way so when it gets closer to the time to the time like don't dm me right now because i'm never gonna remember it um but when it gets closer to the time when i'm like already off you know, drive in my van. Um, definitely feel free to DM me on Instagram or whatever if you want to like meet up and hang out and maybe go for a hike or like you can show me around your town if you have any cool vegan restaurants, we can go there. I think that'd be really fun. So yeah, when it gets closer to that, um, another thing, I'm gonna be starting like an Instagram account that's more of a personal one because I do have one right now, but I just put quotes on it and like spiritual images and whatever. So I'm going to be starting one. And I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to name it like Vegan Earth and Soul, which is what my Instagram is right now. And then just change the Instagram name I have now to like soul quotes. That's what I've been thinking of. So that'll be sometime in the future, probably when I get the van, because like, what am I going to post on it right now? I don't have anything to post. I could post a selfie or something. I don't know. Um, but yeah. Definitely, I'm gonna be like doing that so you can kind of DM me if I'm like, hey, you know, I'm why am I doing a phone? Um, if I post a picture and I'm like, hey, you know, I'm in Seattle, you live in Seattle, we could totally meet up. I think that would be awesome, but again, that's like so far away. It's February, I'm not leaving till July, August. I uh, just wanted to throw that out there though. So, then one last thing, I like I said, this video is gonna be long. I'm talking about as much stuff as I can think to talk about is. I'm going to be definitely vlogging. Like that's something I'm super interested in doing. I think that would be so fun. I'm definitely gonna be answering questions. Like I'm sure you're thinking right now, if you don't know that much about van life, you're gonna be like, you know, where are you gonna shower? I'm definitely gonna answer that, probably in this video actually, but even if I don't answer things in this video, like totally gonna be making videos on that kind of stuff in the future. So you can really see what van life is like. And I do plan on doing some van life construction videos like how i'm doing certain things and whatever um 
And then I do have a website as well, veganearthandsoul.com, and I plan to post a lot of stuff on there as well. Okay, now let's finally move on to more of like the van dynamics, details, all that stuff. So I actually have this um, notebook that I've been keeping a lot of stuff written down in. I have like a table of contents on the first page, and so I have a bunch of different information that um, I'm going to be putting in here. I don't have that much yet, but... Basically, the first things that I have written down are like certain cities that I'm planning on stopping in. Like, I'm obviously not going to be stopping at every single little town and village along the way. Um, but the check marks or the checkpoints that you saw on the road trippers map I showed you, it's not like I'm going from that to that to that to the next one. Um, there's definitely cities along the way that I'm going to be stopping at because they have things that I want to do there, places to sleep, places to shower. Um, we could talk about that right now. I There's a really cool uh, website out there that you can find Walmarts that allow overnight parking at. And so I just kind of like went along my route and found the Walmarts that allow parking and then wrote down the cities they were in. And then I'm planning on getting a Planet Fitness membership, which I think is $20 a month. Um, it's like $10 if you just go to one Planet Fitness, but if you want access to all the Planet Fitnesses in the U.S., in the world uh, it's $20 a month and so I'm planning on getting that and that will be where I shower I'm also planning on getting a solar shower just because there's not that many planet fitnesses in a lot of the areas I'm gonna be so um, let's see here I just have a lot of the different things written down that I'm going to do like the saved places I had on road trippers which again I'm not gonna show you because that ruins the surprise um, I wrote down places to sleep and all the possible stopping areas I have. Another thing is there are some places that don't have Walmarts. So there's a few Walmarts that don't, don't allow overnight parking. And so I wrote down free, there's a website called freecampsites.net, which people can leave reviews about free campsites that they stayed at. And so I found a lot of cool free campsites along the ways and I just wrote down Basically, every place is either a free campsite or Walmart. There's one place that has a Cabela's, but that's honestly, like, that. that's where I'm going to be sleeping. And I'd prefer to sleep in a Walmart because they have cameras, they have lights, there's other people there. But, you know, free campsites, we'll see. I don't know. I've actually never been camping in my life. So, I have um, slept in an RV in a parking lot. I think it was a Cabela's parking lot, and it was pretty fun. But... And then I also have a list of video ideas, um, like two pages or a page front and back long. So trust me, we're going to have some fun videos on here in the future. Um, I'm definitely not only going to be making van videos. Like I'm still going to be doing what I eat in a day is still going to be doing maybe some recipe videos. I don't know. Um, talking about stuff that I like talking about, like happiness related stuff confidence all that spirituality um but yeah gonna be a lot more van videos another thing i have on here is a checklist to complete before leaving like certain things that i have to figure out how to do because you know i've lived with my parents for my whole life i'm in high school there's a lot of things i don't know how to do like i i've never well i've been to a laundromat but i never went to a laundromat and like did all the stuff so i have to learn how to do that because that's where i'd be doing laundry and there's a bunch of other things like getting triple a that i have to do so i made a checklist for that and then everything i will need for the van that's a big one um obviously i'm not gonna i mean i guess i could go through like a lot of the main stuff that i'm gonna be putting in my van yeah it's not super specific i don't know exactly every little thing that's going to be in there um but i'm planning on first of all building kind of like constructing a bed frame um i'm thinking of doing it like from the back tire to the back tire because i'm 5'2 i'll probably be short enough to fit that way never been in a cargo van so i don't know but i think i will so i'm thinking of putting the bed just like at the back part of the van and then storage underneath it and then along you know, cargo vans have like a door on one of the sides. And so along the other side, uh, there's going to be the kitchen area where I have like a, I'll construct some kind of storage cabinet unit thing out of 
two by fours i don't know that kind of stuff i'm plan i'm not gonna get like some already made cabinetry just to save money and because i think it'd be fun to try to figure out how to use tools and stuff uh i'm i am planning on doing this by myself that's another thing I, it's not that i'm not open to help like if i don't know how to do something and i'm worried about cutting my hand off like i'm definitely gonna ask my stepdad for help but i want to do it by myself for the most part and i want to show other people that they can do it themselves even if they're like a 17 year old girl like me who definitely has never done anything like this before you know i took tech ed in seventh and eighth grade but that doesn't teach you more than how to use a jigsaw and a sander those are kind of like the main structural components that i'm going to be putting in there and then also i'll need like sheets comforter blankets pillows i'm planning on getting some lights to go in the ceiling maybe like six of them um led ones that can connect to solar another thing i'm gonna get is a fan that is like built into the roof um by the brand fantastic fan i'll put a picture up on so you can see what it looks like um that runs on solar as well solar panels charge controller fuse panel battery all that stuff that i'll probably need help on i've watched so many videos on how to do solar related stuff and every single one just confuses me more and more and more so i don't know that's that's the part that i'm like kind of not too excited about <laughs> um but i'm probably gonna get like 200 watts of solar and i think that'll be enough to power the fan the lights um charging my laptop phone computer and getting a little mini fridge another thing is a hot spot because you know wi-fi along the road a mobile hotspot is what i'm talking about which i don't know that much about them but i'm pretty sure they're like a thing where you can just it's like this little device and it basically gives you wi-fi wherever you need it um i'm planning on bringing my bike with me so i'll need my bike and my bike rack clothing obviously on my computer phone camera whatever um headphones food garbage and recycling bins um like small bins obviously uh silverware bowls plates all that kind of stuff um kitchen stuff like strainers okay why am i i'm gonna get to the important stuff <laughs> uh a portable stove and lighter i'm i don't really know exactly what stove i'm gonna get but just like a camping stove i'm not gonna build one into like a countertop or anything like that um a fridge the kind of fridge i'm planning on getting is a top loading compressor fridge i think that's what it's called and it basically looks like a cooler but it's a fridge and those are a lot more energy efficient a little bit more expensive i think than like a mini fridge would be i might bring a blender i'm not 100 percent sure because i heard that they are just like not very energy efficient and when you turn on a blender it uses a ton of power so i don't know if i'm gonna do that or not but like having a smoothie once in a while would be super cool oh uh, let's see gonna need some like storage containers and tupperware for food that kind of stuff um fresh and gray water tanks planning on getting five and five gallons of each of those curtains and a tapestry 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 i don't know uh i think it would be a good idea to have a tapestry that kind of goes uh right behind the seats so when you're sleeping or when you're in there and you don't want anyone to know you're in there it just you can kind of hang it up and then when you're sleeping um to put like maybe some kind of velcro like felt with velcro on it to the windows uh, i think that's probably what i'll end up doing i might get a hammock that would be really cool but that's probably something i get along the way because it's not really a necessary item um earplugs and a sleeping mask i think that's important if you're in a walmart parking lot you know there's lights there's noise which is good for safety but not for sleeping a fire extinguisher and a carbon monoxide detector for safety small toolkit first aid kit um flashlight those are all good things for safety uh spare tire and jack overheat number two uh next a mosquito net might do that um because it'd be nice to have like the doors open at night and not have mosquitoes flying everywhere uh let's see 
I've been thinking about getting a portable toilet. I, I'll show a picture on the screen of what it looks like. It's like a really cheap one, not a composting toilet or anything like that because, you know, a cargo van, it's not something that I'm going to be able to stand up in. It's not a big, long thing. Um, you know, don't have enough money for a sprinter van. So I wouldn't get like a huge toilet because I wouldn't have anywhere to put it, but a small little one. And that's kind of the main stuff that I have on there. Then I have a page of van build supplies, which is blank because I haven't written anything there yet. I do have um, like a Google Docs page where I have a bunch of different things linked. But I'm not really going to go into that because that's the part that I haven't really planned that much yet. I feel like there's certain things I have to... I feel like I should get the van first um, and then kind of be able to measure the dimensions because I have looked everywhere for the dimensions of a Chevy Express cargo van, which is likely the one I'll be getting. I can't find anything that makes sense. Then I also did some food brainstorming um, because I'm not going to have a lot of storage for food, especially with a fridge that's not like a full fridge uh the top loading compressor fridges are really small there's really not that much room in them so i just have like a bunch of different ideas for like staples and sauces and spreads and spices seasonings fruit veggies and other things that i can take with me so that i you know i don't want to be going out to eat a lot because that's expensive and so did that. Not gonna go through that because it's not really that interesting. I also have a page kind of on solar stuff. Just kind of like get my ideas written down and try to understand it better. That's really all I have there. All the logistics of like what type of insulation I'm gonna be using. Uh, floor, ceiling, side panels, not side panels, walls. Um, like what kind of wood I'm going to be using to make the bed frame or to construct the kitchen area compartments. I don't know any of that stuff. I'm not like, I don't have specific uh, storage things picked out or whatever, or like a sink. I'm planning on having a sink in there, um, running water. That would definitely make life so much easier, um, but I don't have like a specific sink picked out yet. So all of that stuff, I I think it's best to just wait because so I'm planning on like I said earlier getting the van either at the end of this month or sometime in April if I got it at the beginning of April that gives me April May June July that gives me four months to convert it and for two of those months I won't be in school I'll be working only a part-time job I see a lot of people who have like full-time jobs and they can get it done in two months um, so I don't I think I'll have a lot of time to convert the van, which is really nice. And so I'm not really worried about having every single thing figured out before I get it. For safety, I'll obviously have knives for like kitchen knives. So I could always use that to defend myself. I'll have pepper spray as well. And then I also plan on bringing my softball bat. I did play softball for a few years, so I know how to swing a bat think you wouldn't even have to do it that hard and just hit somebody in like the knee or the calf or whatever and that hurt pretty bad. Not that I'd want to hurt anybody, but I think, you know, this would keep me pretty safe unless they have a gun or something. I see so many people on YouTube traveling solo as females and they are all alive still. They don't get murdered, they don't get sex trafficked. So I'm not really worried about that happening. I, I understand it's a possibility, but I could also fall down the stairs and break my neck in a couple hours. There's a lot of things that could go wrong. Just doing like normal things, everyday things, not putting yourself in danger because you're in some foreign location and there's like predators on the loose and they're gonna find you in your van and I don't really think of it that way. Honestly, I, I rarely feel scared of humans. It's more animals. Like, when I'm out in those national parks, I'm probably gonna feel scared that I'm gonna get attacked by a bear. That's probably gonna be my biggest worry of the whole thing. But that being said, I'm obviously going to take precautions because people do get kidnapped. People do get murdered. I'm totally aware. Like, I'm not somebody who denies that that happens. In fact, I love watching, like, crime shows or i used to watch a ton of crime shows like criminal minds ncis csi all of those i've seen like all of them okay not every single episode but things like dateline 
I've watched that. I used to watch that with my mom all the time. I watch YouTubers who talk about um, murder stories, kidnap stories, like where is videos. I watch those all the time. So I'm totally aware that bad things happen in the world, but I don't feel like it's really as frequent and prevalent as we think it is. But anyways, um, another thing I wanted to talk about real quickly is I got this really cool thing from Best Buy uh, when I went to go get a tripod for my camera and it's basically like a Joby Gorilla Pod arm with a suction cup on the end and so I can stick this to like my windshield or my side window and put my camera up on there and then like film while I'm driving. I think that would be really cool. Obviously gonna be safe I'm not the kind of person who's gonna be like distracted by it but I could just like flip on my camera without even taking my eyes off the road and then talk so I think that would be really cool so I think that's all that I can think of to say that's probably enough because I'm sure this video is very long um, if you have any questions obviously let me know like I'm not gonna not answer them but just know that they will definitely be answered in the future unless you're like super way out there bizarre questions um they're definitely going to be answered um but that doesn't mean like i said i'll totally answer i am really excited to do this like i am so 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 excited i can't even explain it um but yeah i should probably wrap up this video so uh thanks for watching and i'll see you guys in the next one